In the amateur baseball world, you sum it up with one word, Jupiter. And if you didn't know, at the end of this show, you will know. It's Jupiter, as in Florida. At the Worldwood Bat Association World Championship, at the spring training home of the Marlins and the Cardinals, a quarter century of amateur baseball history. Hi there, folks, and in this special, we're going to talk about the history of Jupiter. It's incredible. She's Danny Wexelman. My name is Darren Sutton. Welcome back to the many ballparks that encompass this spring training complex. And when you look back at a quarter century, you see nearly 1,100 Major League alumni. If I may name drop the Braves, Michael Harris, Spencer Strider playing deep into October, Freddie Freeman, Clayton Kershaw, a couple of famous Dodgers. They played in this event again, close to 1,100. So let's start there, the depth of the players that have played here. I mean, the talent is unbelievable. You named a couple of them. And these guys want to win this event, but they're also here with their families. Their travel teams are their home away from home, and that's something that we hear throughout this event all the time. And on top of that, you see the moms and the dads and the kids and the siblings all running around supporting these guys wherever they may be in the world. It's Jupiter here in this case. And then, of course, where's their next home? Some of these guys come to the event and they haven't committed to college or they've changed their minds. They're looking for their home after travel ball. And so we get to share all these stories here from Jupiter. The tour guide that can help get them to their next home, they're scouts and there are 30 teams represented here, about 10 per team. So do that number, 300. Just about every division, one division, two school is represented here. So that home may be a scholarship to play college baseball. You know you're good though, if there's a golf cart gather around. So the best way to get this piece going is in a golf cart. Away we go. It's like a baseball convention. Gear, key, right? I mean, you gotta have gear. Jerry Ford's new books for sale over there. May I? Yeah, go for it, man. Cool. That's Sutro Light, one of our premier baseball shades. Wow. All right, so the Rev 1X. Tell me about the Rev 1X. I see Lindor with that sometimes, yeah. right? This is his main glove. This okay. Is, uh, he has his logo right in there. Um, he loves it. bat boy for your team next inning? Yeah, please. Really? I would be honored. Oh, I'd make my dreams come true. Congrats, come on, kid! Come on, get through the Beat it, beat it. Hurry, 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 hurry. Make me proud, right? Yes, uh, do, oh, it, do it, do it. Okay, two, one, cut out. There you go, there. There you Thank go. You. Thank you. Oh, buddy! You can just throw it at me. Just throw it towards me. I don't, I'm just a lowly bat I'm just a lowly bat boy. Don't even worry about it. You know, that Sutton guy wore number 20. Right there, number 20. That Sutton guy wore that number. All righty. Bang. Get through there. Get through there. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Get there. Ah. How am I doing, Blue? OK? The knees, really. I mean, seriously. All right, here we go. Starts now. Go two out rally. Come on, base hit right here. Yes, that a boy. Ah. Nothing. Scouts and organizations everywhere. Game's here. Real ballers from Brooklyn. I'm going in. I heard you had a nickname for him. Yeah, I'm calling this guy Danny Diamonds. He's like a movie star because he looks like he's one of those guys on Wall Street. Look at the hair, it's like a shark fin. Everything perfect. Seriously, so you're calling me Danny Diamonds and this is what you have on? <laughs> Dude, what is Brooklyn baseball all about? I mean, seriously, what is it all about? Brooklyn baseball, uh, baseball is gritty. Go! Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, set him! Oh, we gotta set him! Set him! Oh, Come on! Oh, uh, it's guys that feel like they don't get the exposure that a lot of Southern guys get, so they play with a chip on their shoulder. I think that it's finding ways to get fields, and uh, I mean, there's a million fields down here, and, and in Brooklyn, it's really hard to get on the field. Danny Diamond, that's right. Waving this right hand, okay. okay? Now remember, when this goes this way, your knee is gonna come that way. So it's this. Ooh. Exactly, now you come back with the left, boom. You think I got a chance of pulling both of them no, off? No, we'll just go one then. One, mm -hmm. two, three, boom. Okay, my guy, it's a wrap out here. That perfect Can we get some more cameras here, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> You guys ready? Yes, sir. 
I'm always curious what, what makes an umpire want to be an umpire. Not being a good at baseball. <laughs> <laughs> or you can host. I was terrible. I had 11 ERA in A ball in one of your leagues. <laughs> Where are we going? Four and seven right here? All right, so we got game over here, game over here. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for letting me drive you out. So you figure 30 major league teams, they send as many scouts as they're able. Everyone gets a golf cart. In other words, hundreds upon hundreds of carts. If you see golf carts five, six, seven rows deep, you know you're good. You know you're being scouted. Garrett Cole at this event, you couldn't get to the field because of all the golf carts. When it's all said and done, how many carts are out there? We've got 331 carts on site. 331, 331. carts. It's about 17 semi loads. Wow. <laughs> Thank you guys. Is this work or are you just having fun? So I get paid for this. Can you believe it? Anytime is. Now she's back in the atmosphere. Drops of Jupiter in her hair. Yeah. So when we come back, it's going to be incredible. We're going to go all over campus. The stories, the scouts, the dreams, how they came through, and the champions. Who wins it? The bottom line is, it's a great day to be Danny Diamonds here at Jupiter. Boys, keep it running for me, okay? Welcome back to Jupiter, Florida. Day one in the books, and there were 100 teams that packed the fields. The golf carts were gassed up, of course, and the play on the field didn't disappoint. In a moment, you're going to hear from Perfect Games national cross checker Brian Sikowski. But first, highlights from day one. We've got a fun game today, and on the mound, MJ So, who we have enjoyed his athleticism. He and his brother are both very talented young athletes. And, and a balk. A balk is called by home plate umpire Denver Dangerfield, and that will play to run one to nothing. Toronto Blue Jays scout team on top. Perhaps that in So's mind. Rolled out toward first. Antonio Jimenez plates the second run of the game, an RBI for Antonio. The infield is drawn in. This is Trip Landers. Bouncing ball, slips by the mound, tough play. Hurrying over and the throw is wild. Two runs overall score. Rolls one out toward third. The throw home, the tag in time. Nice job executing there. And then away we go. You have the lead. You hand it over now to Hunter Burns. Franco hits a high fly ball to right field. Looking right into the sun out there. Making the play is Carter. Runner is tagged. Throw is high. Nice job by Baines attempting to back up. The runner will move to second and Trey Phelps. And that one skips by. That'll be costly. into right field. What a piece of two out hitting. Then we get Noah Franco out for his fourth inning of work. Swing and a miss through that one. A couple of his pitches this inning have been fastball velocity but been misidentified <laughs> as sliders. That's how much movement, you know, is on those pitches. There is that one. Will snap throw, big aggressive, and out at first base. Fires it down. Could this do it? Boy, what a play! We've seen Gustafson make two great plays. That will do it. That is the game, and so the Toronto Blue Jays scout team out of the gates with the victory. Cal Randall, the right-handed pitcher who has been up to 95 fastball plays in the zone, running all over the place. Fastball dots the outside corner. That's strike three. Oh, Cal Randall. That's Gabe Smith on the mound. Kevin McGonigal takes the first opportunity. Best hit tool in the class. For As you said. Like that. As you said. I love watching big Trent Caraway play. When I say big, there's presence there. He's 6'2", 205, 5. <laughs> a lot of those California players look bigger in person down in the field. Give way now to Johnny Farmello. Pretty swing. Base hit left field. With only one out, this could be a big inning. Right-handed bat, Gallagher. That is ball four. That will play to run. Macon Winslow gets the call now. Got him in the hand. 
that will play another run. Ryan Jaros now. Another broken bat, but that's an RBI. Mike Miller, who takes the rock and he rolls on the mound. Matthew Priest with a base hit. Takes a big aggressive turn. He picks up an RBI. Runner moves, draws the throw. They're going to try the double steal. The slide, he's in there. Four to two is the score. Andre and Kennedy fly to left field back in the second inning. Cockton ready to go. Hits a high fly ball to right field. P.J. Morlando into foul territory. Fires it home. On a hop. We've got a play in time. Wow, what a throw by Morlando. That's a big, big league play by a, a player who's new to the outfield. He had to get rid of that ball right away, and he throws a one-hop strike. A genius play by P.J. Morlando. All right, we're going to wrap up day one, but before we get to day one, we have to get to the pregame Wednesday night. Brian, you were here. You saw two arms from Alpha Prime. We're going to start with Quinn Larson, the Cal commit in the 2023 class. You liked this guy. I did, yeah. I, I love these pop-up guys. I love guys who, who really make names for themselves on the national stage here in Jupiter, and that's kind of what Jupiter's for, after all. And uh, Larson's a guy who we've known about. He pitched in an event in Arizona a couple weeks ago. Our, our West Coast guys tipped us off. But this was really his sort of coming out on a national stage. He's a, a long-bodied righty who's young for the grade. He moves well on the mound. It's 92-95, a lot of arm speed. He can really spin a slider, too. It's, up over 2,900 in terms of the spin rate. It's a pitch that kind of matches the metrics with the eye test. It looks like it should miss bats, and it does. Committed to Cal, whether he goes there, whether he ends up going in the draft, really like the upside there. And then his teammate, mm -hmm. Brenner Wailama, mm -hmm. another right-handed pitcher. That's the theme of our day ones and our Wednesday night arms. But what was different about Brenner? Yeah, again, a guy who, uh, me being a landlocked Midwesterner, Here's the place where I see these dudes from the, from the West Coast and, and further than that. It's Jupiter. It's places like this. So uh, it's different from, from Larson, like you said, Danny. It's a, more of a physical, more of a come right at you mentality. Like he looks like he's trying to throw hard. And that's a positive thing. We're not saying that that's a negative in any way. But uh, a guy who still needs to continue refining his command, but someone who anytime you throw 95 and we haven't seen it before, that's notable and stands out. He stood out for me. Okay, Max Stanley on Thursday. Now we move into official day one. Number one right-handed pitcher in Colorado, but he's committed to Jim Schlossnagel's program at Texas A&M. You like this guy. You know him well. I do, yeah. Stanley's a guy who I've kind of had a, a pocket follow. We call pocket follow. A little fascination with uh, for about a year now. A super skinny kid. Um, we talked about being a good mover on the mound. Talked about being a good athlete. Stanley is one of those guys. He's got really advanced movement patterns in his lower half that he's able to repeat at a high level. This allows him to really be projected to throw a lot harder, along with how lean he is. Uh, it's 88, 91, 92 right now. He's going to throw a lot harder than that, probably pretty soon. And the secondary stuff is coming along well. It's curveball slider, it's changeup, it's all four, it's strikes, it's good fastball quality too. He's got all the ingredients to be really good, even if he doesn't throw all that hard right now. All right, we're going to dive into a space that I know Brian and I both love very much. You get to cover this at such an intense level, the junior college space. Absolutely. Gavin Adams represents that space for you. Another right-handed pitcher, Indian River State College. What stood out about this guy? Adams, uh, and again, we, we tried the night before Jupiter on, the, on these the, the prequel nights, like we call them. It, we try and have some, some of the Florida Juco's come here and play, and that's what we had last night with the Indian River State and Palm Beach State were here to play. And uh, Adams is a guy who, as a freshman last year, we're aware of, but has taken a leap, has taken a jump. And even though he's a junior college player, not a high school player, what better platform to take your jump than here in Jupiter? And that's what he did last night. It was a quick one inning look, kind of a showcase vibe for that game. So up to 96, a lot of life on the fastball, a lot of arm speed, professional level arm speed. He's got a pretty good slider too. It's a guy who, as we build out our Juco board and as we build out the draft board even, he's gonna be on there. I'm excited. I'm Absolutely. very, very excited. And it's not just the 2023 draft class that's here. There's also a 2024 that mm -hmm. impressed you more. It's not a new name. Skylar Sanford, a top 10 right-handed pitcher in his class, committed to Florida, staying home. But is there something that you saw that stood out in his outing? Yeah, with guys like with Sanford, 
who we see a lot. We see a lot of him. We've seen him a ton over the years. It's a guy we've seen since he was 13, it feels like. So for us, every look kind of gives us a little bit more of a clue into what this player is going to become, whether it's Sanford or whether it's anybody else. And anytime we see a player take a little minute step in the right direction, whether it's a little bit of a cleaner delivery, a little bit more arm speed, or a little bit more free and easy coming through to release, that's notable because that tells us a little bit of a story of a guy improving. And that's what I saw from Sanford. He only threw two innings today, um, struck out three, was up to 93 with the fastball. Just really loved the way the body works, really loved the way that he is coming into his own, developing physical strength onto his frame. He's a big kid, he's 6'3", 6 6'4". 6 um, just a guy who we've had ranked high for a long time, and every time we see him, he proves to us that we were right to do so. Talk about big. Walker Jenkins is going to round out your day one picks, the number two player in the 2023 class. Mm -hmm. This is a guy that we've known for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that the South Charlotte Panthers are thrilled that he's playing here in Jupiter, but mm -hmm. you were thrilled to get to see him in action. Yeah, and Jenkins needs no introduction. He's the second ranked player in the country. Uh, there's probably a case to be made for him to be number one. Um, he's a player who was hurt a little bit this summer. Like you said, Danny, we saw him at the All-American game. That's where he was fully healthy, but he wasn't really fully healthy with reps yet. That was right when he'd gotten back to full health. So now, fast forward two months, Walker Jenkins has seen live pitching, and Walker Jenkins is raking. And that's just, this is a guy we've loved watching for years. The left-handed swing is so smooth. He's extremely physical. He's got a ton of strength. He's got a ton of left-handed pop. Um, and it just, it's a personal one for me. I don't even feel like I'm evaluating him anymore as much as I just enjoy watching him play the game. So uh, it's cool to see him kind of finish his amateur career on the circuit here in Jupiter and, and to have some success doing it. Well, you've been doing this for a long time too. <laughs> a decade coming to this event. What were you most excited about when you got the flight, you got your car, mm -hmm. and you got here to Jupiter? It's um, Jupiter is a lot like, you know, a, a little kid getting up and his parents telling him, hey, we're going to Disney World, something like that. That's how I look at it. it it's, a, it's a baseball festival of the highest order. Uh, the best players are here. And all my friends are here, too. Uh, my PG colleagues, uh, Danny, I, I don't see you all the time, so yeah. it's nice to see you. And, and um, all the scouts we know, all the coaches we know, all the travel coaches we know, all the best players in the world are here. It's just a, it's such a cool week, a cool experience to celebrate amateur baseball, and, and it's something I look forward to every year, no matter how many I end up coming to. We always appreciate your insights, my friend. Thank you for having me. All right, hey, stay tuned. Do not go anywhere, because when we come back, we'll introduce you to the catcher for Team Alpha Prime. He just so happens to be the reigning MVP of the All-American Classic. It's Ryder Helfrich. And Perfect Game TV returns to the WWBA World Championship. Jupiter, Florida, the World Wood Bat Association World Championship. We continue on, and we continue in the outfield because it's that empty feeling an outfielder has when he's racing over his shoulder to catch a baseball to the deepest part of the ballpark. That's exactly what Ryder Helfrick did. Perfect Game All-American, the outstanding catcher out of Discovery Bay, California, the number three catcher in the 2023 class, when he crushed the ball at Chase. And though he speaks very quietly, dare I say introverted, oh, did he speak loudly with his bat. The Perfect Game All-American Classic MVP, Ryder Helfrick. I think going into the Classic, people didn't really know how aggressive of a hitter I was. Ryder drives that one towards center field. That one is touched. It's down. There is a hit, and it's for extra bases. The young man out of California in the third with the triple. During the summer, like before that, I was kind of figuring out what I like to do, and I think into the Classic, knowing like how aggressive to be. Ryder Helfrich again unloaded them. A West 5-2 win, and Helfrich the MVP. My name is Ryder Helfrich. I play for Alpha Prime. We've been playing together for four years, and we're based out of Northern California. My favorite hit in that game, the triple was cool, but definitely the one in the extra innings because I think that like secured the win, and that was definitely a cool moment. I think for me, it's definitely the brotherhood. Like you create memories you're never going to forget about. Like you're always going to remember playing these games that you don't play baseball ever again. Like it's, you're never gonna forget about these summers and the falls you spent with them. I never really knew if I was gonna make it or not, but just going into it, just hoping to make it because it's such a cool experience. 
It was actually, we were playing in Arizona and he called me and told me we made it. And it was with Carl Schmidt and we we're just like, let's go. Like we just made the team. So it was, it was a super cool experience and kind of moment to be there with somebody else who made it was really cool as well. As a hitter, you're always making changes. It's never going to be the same swing. It's never going to be robotic because you can't be. Like the pitchers are different, everything's different. So making changes based on how you're feeling has definitely been a big thing for me. So like I've been working on a toe tap instead of a high leg kick and simplifying. So I think always making changes is going to be a key as a hitter because nobody's ever going to be the same. It's never going to be the same swing. The part of my game I am most proud of is definitely my catching. I think I've come a long way in my catching because before it used to be like hitter first, catcher second, but I think I've really taken a big stride in like catcher, hitter, like kind of the same. And becoming a better catcher has definitely helped me and like doing yoga and doing everything has helped me with my mobility and it goes along with all aspects of the game. My hopes and dreams are to play Major League Baseball. Like it's the end goal and I think for me coming up, go out and play because I know if I play, the right decision will be made and whatever that is, it will happen. So I think just playing baseball is the most important thing. So when you think about health, Frick, think Kevin Parada, Perfect Game All-American, Bryce Harper, PG All-American. In other words, athletic catchers who can catch or, according to David Ronsley, longtime player personnel director for PG and Scout, according to David, you also could be an All-American as a third baseman. That describes Harper, that describes Parada, and that describes Ryder Helfrich. Really athletic, a very bright future wherever he ends up on the field. When we return, we'll take you about 150 miles west of here to the hurricane-ravaged Gulf Coast. The Worldwood Bat Association World Championship on the east coast of Florida here in Jupiter. Hi there, folks. But as we look back over the last couple of weeks, it was the west coast of Florida that was devastated as the globe watched in horror as Hurricane Ian ripped through this state. When you get to know the Florida Burn, they're a championship team here. They brought two squads here this year. You learn that they have players up and down the west coast of Florida. That's what they call home, and more specifically, in Fort Myers like Tyler Bouchard, a young man who comes to play in this event, a young man who is committed to go to the Naval Academy. And while he's here playing and opening more and more eyes with his play in the outfield, his eyes, his thoughts, his prayers are back home on the family and friends. Their cars, they're gone. Um, there's already mold throughout their whole house, and uh, we were fortunate. It was headed about 200 miles north, and um, living in Florida my whole life, it, it's really got to be you know a catastrophic five to you know scare us. It really took that eastward turn. So you know before the storm, we started to get a little nervous. Um, probably about 12 hours within. But you know, within 24 hours, you're kind of stuck with whatever game plan you made, whether that's stay and leave in. Um, because by that time, you're not gonna make it far enough by car. The news shuts off about four hours into the storm. And the last thing I remember seeing is Fort Myers Beach just go underwater. Um, so, you know, that kind of speaks volume about how everybody was feeling. I describe it as eerie, you know, because you don't, you don't know what's going on. It was almost like you were trapped, even though, you know, like I said, I was so lucky um, to be trapped in a house that kept its walls up.
Another thing I've been fortunate enough is to uh, receive donations from the other coast, uh, the East Coast where we're at now, to uh, be able to hand those out to less fortunate neighborhoods. And uh, it's, it's really showed, you know, the power of love and the power of community. Um, well, the other day we, um, we were helping out a construction crew that uh, spoke um, very broken English, you know. I'll never forget the way that he uh, exclaimed food when we opened the truck and, you know, it, and all we had really was, you know, snacks and water. You know, just the fact that we were able to make his day was something that'll uh, stick with me forever and, you know, uh, the, the feeling of giving back. Our purpose here is, um, you know, to give back on earth and uh, really reach full forgiveness uh, to everybody. And, um, you know, I try to instill, you know, the same, uh, same qualities every day because, uh, you know, we don't know when our last, our last day on uh, God's gifted earth is. Just keep showing love to everybody. And if you want to talk about a calling from a higher power, you could clearly hear his beliefs. He is, at a very low level, bilingual. But it was plenty enough because he found his Spanish to be a true asset when he spoke with those that only spoke the language as he helped them through their recovery. When we come back to Jupiter, day two highlights, analysis, and a 2026 lefty who is drawing quite a crowd this week. This is Perfect Game TV's coverage of the WWBA World Championship. More fun with the future of baseball in Jupiter, Florida, Perfect Games Worldwood Bat Association World Championship. Day two in the books. Hi there, folks. Darren Sutton. And a, a lot to talk about day two in this ballpark, certainly. But how about way out there? And I mean way out there to the Cardinals complex, Cardinals 3, where Hawaii Elite, the 2G team, and that's way out. That's 10 hours without changing planes. They've come to this event, represented Hawaii. They tied the top tier ruse. In day two, they beat pretty handily the Bandito Scout team, scoring double digit runs. Hawaii, what a great story making the long trip to Jupiter, Florida. Within the walls of this pretty ballpark, it was the combo of Klang and Kang shutting out East Cobb for CBU. Here's the video. This is Corey Klang, left-handed pitcher, a USF commit in the class of 2024, Brian. Through the year to date in perfect game events, he has a 0.30 ERA, 25 innings with 42 strikeouts. Coming up to bat, Victor Martinez, the son of former major leaguer Victor Martinez. There we go. Good Martinez piece. rips that ball through the infield. That brings up Hayden Yost playing right field for CBU this afternoon. See these guys one last time as Yost crushes that ball into right field. It's going to go all the way back to the dirt. Martinez, he's going to be waved home. Yost is going to stand up at third. CBU on the board, one to nothing, an RBI triple. Corey Kling back out on the mound. Good pitch there. And a great pitch from Kling. You've got hitters guessing at this point. Yep. And there it is. This is Hayden Yost. Yost lifts that ball into shallow left. It's going to get down. The runner's going to come home. Spencer Butt coming all the way to the plate. Slides in safely. Looks like that'll be it for Kling. Nine strikeouts and four and a third shutout. Two hits. But now they're going to have to face Johnny King. Good breaking ball. This is Jose Luis Ortiz Rivera. He'll try and keep this inning alive but Johnny King gets him to hit that ball in the air coming over to make that play Spencer, but that's gonna be it. CBU shut out East Cobb, eight to nothing. The defending champs, Ostingers Baseball Academy taking on artillery scout East Coast Ghost. Evan Dempsey grounded out his first at bat back in the first. And he rips that pitch right back to where it came from. Welsh is being rounded home. He'll score. And the Ostinger's on the board. What a great job. Now you've got the number three hole hitter, Dylan LaPointe. You got a runner still in scoring position in the third. And he tags that ball to left field. It dies as it comes down. And Lacordo is able to make the play. Caleb Bonimer finds a hole in the left side of the field, so another run will come home to score. That ball's gonna drop in for a base hit, coming all the way around to score. Lucas Moore, and that ball is 
hit in shallow center right over second base. Six to one. Two down in the top of the seventh. And that's a great play over there at third. And we have a 2-0 artillery team. And now a couple of days in on this great event. Let's bring in Perfect Games Vice President of Player Personnel, David Ronsley. David, two days in. We actually had the good fortune of calling on the stream day one. But these two days in, let's talk about some of the guys that you've seen. And let's talk about P.J. Morlando because this is a gentleman that's trending to be a PG All-American. He's a 2024. He really showed out at Junior National. You like what he's done here. Well, it's appropriate that we lead off with him because if this was a web gem show, he would he would be the lead off on it. He'd be the whole show, as a matter of fact. This was the play he made in the game that we broadcast yesterday, one of the best defensive plays I've ever seen. And this is for an athlete who's known as a hitter. He just transitioned from catcher to right field within the last year. So he's new to the outfield, but the play he made with the running catch, hosing the guy at home, reminded me of a play Jason Hayward made in the, in the semifinal game back in the 17 under, I don't know what year, I'd have to look that up. It had to be perfect, it was perfect, and boy, was he impressive. So another outfielder, Neomar Ochoa Acosta. This is a young man who's a Houston committee, plays for the newly merged Premier Texas Premier Banditos Club. What did you see? Well, Ochoa Acosta is, I think, probably one of the most unrecognized senior prospects in the country. Didn't go to national, didn't, obviously wasn't an All-American. He's ranked 118th in the 23 class. But he's been special late in the summer and the fall. He's homeward in six straight tournaments. We're talking about a guy with a, a longer Elijah Green body, 6'4", 210. He throws 95 off the mound. He has huge power. He had two doubles in the Banditos' first game. I think the odds are that he's going to hit a home run here, too. Wouldn't surprise anybody with the streak he's on. Yeah, kind of a brand new 17 year old, very, very young. Matthew Priest is a 2024. 20, he lives in San Diego. He's a Stanford commit, and he can fly. Ran a 6 1 5 at Junior National. How about here? Well, th this, this might be my favorite player in the country to watch now, and that's not an exaggeration. I mean, he swings like Hunter Pence. It's that, that off-balance swing and sort of flailing. And I'm talking about our friend Hunter Pence, by the way. That's not disrespectful. And he always squares up the ball. He has huge power, homer to the junior national, but he's the fastest player in the country. It's like vintage Mike Trout speed. He just flies, you know, 319 on a stolen base, 396 on a turn on a single. It's unique speed and he plays like the football player. It's hard, he runs hard, he gets into his hips, and I love watching him run. I love watching the leg kick of the athletic All-American Cal Randall, the Discovery Bay, California young man who is a UCLA commit. He dealt in his couple of innings. Yeah, and, and he's being saved for later in the week. There's there's no doubt about that. The Canes are four-time champions. Their, point, their, their goal is to play on, on Monday. And Randall, if, if they get there, is going to be part of that. But he was awesome in his two innings. Only threw 23 pitches, 90 to 93, almost all strikes. Big nose to toes curveball was in complete command. He could have gone seven, no problem at all, but that wasn't what the Kings needed on, uh, on Thursday. Over the last year, we've heard about the up and down value of the dollar, certainly. How about the up and down value of strikes, especially if it compares to Velo? Because I know right now, in this portion of our update, you want to talk about just being a good old fashioned strike thrower. Yeah, we, we talk about Velo a lot. It, it's important, there's no denying that. You know, I do mostly showcases, and of course, we encourage pitchers to throw hard. But this is a tournament, the biggest tournament of the year, and getting outs is far more important. And the, the clean, clear way to get outs is to throw strikes. And I've got three pitchers I want to highlight who are premier strike throwers who threw great so far that caught my eye. I, I'm going to go with Connor Madison first, the Grand Canyon commit. That's from my neck of the woods. He's at Canyon View High School, west side of Phoenix in Goodyear, Arizona. Connor Madison up first. Well, Connor Madison really didn't have a profile. He was uncommitted at the All-American game. He threw in the exhibition game against All-Americans and dealt. I think he struck out all six hitters he faced. So basically came to help out is what Yeah, he, he was a guy I who came that. to I last minute, literally last minute call, three hours before he got the phone call, hey, come out to, to Chase Field and pitch. And he was abusive. He was just as abusive here. Two innings again, he, you know, he's pitching for the Ohio Warhawks. They want to play on Sunday and Monday. They want his innings. He was 90-92, struck out five of the six hitters. Um, and he has maybe the best changeup 
in the senior class. It, it, it's just a swing and miss pitch. He abused the All-Americans with it. He abused guys here with it. I'm, I want to see him pitch again this week. All right, so a mid-major GCU, a mid-major Texas State. That's where right-handed pitcher Brad Pruitt is committed. He's a young man out of Corinth, Texas. He actually pitched in Jupiter last year. What do you see in his outing? Well, he pitches for the Doolin's Dodgers, who always seem to overachieve. Mookie Betts' his old team. Oh, Mookie Betts' his old team. They always seem to overachieve here. Th their first-round game, first game here, was against the defending champions, Ostinger's baseball. You know, the number one ranked team in the 17 UPG rankings, he shut them out. Two nothing in seven innings, complete game shutout, two hits, nine strikeouts, through 79 pitches in seven innings. That is efficient. You know, he, he was 88-91, threw a hard mid-80 slider for strikes, but, but it was precise. I mean, how do you throw 79 pitches in seven innings at this level? That's masterful. Sam Cozart's been pitching here forever. He's a 2025. He started pitching in this event in eighth grade. He's six seven. He's the man. This is a <laughs> this is a young man. Is a Mississippi State commit, number one right-handed pitcher in the 25 class. He again fit in here. Well, well, Sam Cozart fit in when, like you said, when he was an eighth grader. It's crazy. He's such PG family. He was in the 13U festival twice because he was so good as a 12-year-old. And, and we watched him mature on the mound. And he is so mature. He threw the best game of his PG life. He faced 19 hitters, pitching for the South Charlotte Panthers. He allowed a solo home run. Otherwise, six innings, one hit, no walks, 11 strikeouts, through 76 pitches in six innings, you know, 70-some percent strikes, just pure efficiency, 90 to 93. I don't think he's going to be a guy, even despite his size, who's going to throw 98 or something, but he is so polished, can throw strikes with four pitches, and he knows how to do it. He did it great. Um, you know, on his amount trip this week. So he's a 25. I want to add a 26, if you'll play along with me, because I know you're aware of 14U Select Festival arm R.J. Cope. He's here with the Toronto Blue Jays scout team. Again, he's a 2026 grad. You saw the line score. Scout him up on how he gets so many outs. He falls right into that same group of strike throwers. Well, first of all, we're talking about a 2026 at Jupiter. That wouldn't have happened a while ago. But these guys compete. Cope was outstanding today against a good team through three perfect innings, 82-85. But there's such command, just like Sam Cozart, like you said. He's 6'5", and he's so mature as a pitcher. He's a very good athlete. He'll set the all-time record for most PG events played in because he plays first base and hits when he's not on the mound. So he's everywhere at every event. He's got a baseball background. He's so mature on the mound. It's fun watching him pitch. Appreciate the update, my friend. Outstanding stuff. And I think one of the great parts about R.J. Cope is the fact that the parents are so proud of who he is, and he's well aware and grateful for the sacrifices they've made. When you think about mom, who played college basketball at North Carolina, now is a sitting judge, and dad, who played professional baseball in the Mariners organization, and the awareness of R.J., how grateful he is for all the sacrifices that both parents have made. It's a family affair, and David talked about how well he pitched. Right away, we thought, let's get over there. Let's get to know RJ even better and mom and dad. This is Robin Cope, his given name, RJ, everyone knows him as. He'll play his age, he'll play 15, he'll play 16. Whatever's around, he's going to play it, and it's a good-looking breaking ball. Very right good there. breaking ball, yes. My name is RJ Cope. After the Select Fest, I'm still working. Uh, still continue to get stronger, better, faster. Uh, going out there and pitching, there was a lot of great guys. And uh, just went out there and competed, did everything the right way. Just went out there and tried to dominate and not give them pitches a hit. At the end of 2020, I had a problem in my back. And uh, it was with my growth plates, and they just weren't functioning right. And it's just, it was upsetting. but. I never let it get me down. I definitely kept working, getting better, getting stronger, and um, when I went to the 2020 main event, uh, that's when I really started to work on my craft. Uh, when COVID happened, um, we started at Grossburg, and we went from 5'8 to 6'3 and a half during COVID, which was like, wow, this is, this is something new. He started wanting to pitch and he started to show, hey, I can actually do this. And he threw a lot of strikes. That's the one thing I'll give to him early. No matter how crazy the mechanics looked, they were all strikes. So we just said, hey, let's really, you know, kind of refine this here and see where we could go with it. I had a, like an arm sleeve. And an arm sleeve, I just worked with it all the time. I slept with it, um, just was throwing with it. Like I was just trying to keep my blood flowing because my blood was like clotted up. 
as long as I had it on me, it would always help my uh, always help my growth place. It just got better continuously, and then after that, I just I worked on my mechanics and found the things that I did wrong mechanically, and after that, it just everything connected. My mom, she's very interesting. Uh, she likes to talk about her basketball career, and as a judge, she always in court. Dad knows a lot about baseball. He, he was really good at baseball, but uh, he had some arm injuries. Uh, he told me that he threw 96, and I know I believe him, obviously, because he knows a lot about pitching. And uh, athletic, like he was really athletic that I know, so it's just, uh, I know a lot of it was from him, so definitely that athleticism def definitely comes from him. He got all of his athleticism from his mom. <laughs> My mom is very athletic. She's still athletic right now. Yeah, I, I do. I do partially get something from her too, and uh, and my dad. So I, I can't really tell you a lot. They, they both have given a lot of good athleticism to me. So and the hype. I've got some video from pitching when he was probably about ten months. Um, he's been around baseball all of his life. His baby shower was a baseball baby shower. So baseball's kind of been in his blood, literally and figuratively. So. Um, I told him, I said, as long as you've got your grades, uh, I will follow you to the ends of the earth and make sure you have what you need um, to be successful. So, he loves it. It's just a great feeling to be able to know what I've come from and know what I've done to get better at the game that I love. Other than that, it's been, it's been a ride. It's been a ride. So I spoke with one scout, and of course scouts remain unnamed here, that's the way they like to do it, who made it clear they've been on COPE for two years. They've seen what is coming for two years, and they think at 6'6 and 15 years old that that 88 can become 95 plus very, very soon. An incredible story, ironic, isn't it? R.J. COPE, another big left-hander, Randy Johnson, R.J., with what he did in the big leagues. The names aren't related, certainly, but looking ahead, major league teams are all on R.J. COPE. There are also more and more untalented players coming out of Canada. It's not just Joey Votto anymore. It's not just the Nailers. There was a flood about to come from north of the border into colleges and into professional baseball. We'll tell that story when we come back to Jupiter, Florida at the Worldwood Bat Association World Championship. There are 100 teams in Jupiter, Florida at the WWBA World Championship. Our friends up north, the Canadians, traveled all the way down to participate in this event. In fact, it's part of a larger partnership with Perfect Game, working to grow at the youth level, baseball and softball, and making sure that those kids have the same opportunities. But we take you in the dugout and on the field with Canadian Premier, and the message is loud and clear. Don't underestimate this team. Canadian baseball is really overlooked because, uh, you know, we're from the north and not many people recognize that we can play ball just as good as anyone else. I think people should definitely stop sleeping on baseball in Canada because it's definitely a really, really good sport, really big sport, and a lot of talent could come out of Canada. That ball is tagged and it's gone. The Canadian baseball community tends to be really tight-knit. I think for them, it's understanding where they fit in the baseball world relative to their U.S. counterparts and understanding that physically, they're right there. Talent-wise, they're right there. They can do it. They don't have to take a backseat to anybody on a baseball field. The prevalence of Canadians at a high level in baseball continues to pick up, so I hope that it's just a wave after wave, right? This is our first go as a team coming down here. Hopefully we can set the tone for the next generation and they just look up to the next wave and it just rolls from there. It's definitely a new team. We made an awesome team for our league and basically I've been playing around all these guys for, since I was like 12 so it's definitely a great experience to be playing with them and sharing the field with them. And just a good group of guys who like to come out and compete. We're all competitive and we all love to have a good time and we're just coming out of here to just hope to have fun and make it far. Our team's really energetic, we love to have fun, but like also when the time comes, we really uh, lock it in. We mend well together, but us winning also creates the game fun for us, so that's what makes our bond special because we love winning and we love winning together. It's our hope that our partnership with Perfect Game is gonna 
give us even more exposure and connections and when we come down to these events like I'm, my phone is already going off with college coaches that are asking questions and all that nowadays our high-end kids are going to high-end schools so the top kids not just within Ontario but the country of Canada are going to power five they're going to show up in the SEC and ACC there's definitely a huge opportunity for Canadian baseball as a whole coming down here to play against the best competition play in front of a bunch of scouts the adrenaline rushes, I love it. I definitely understand what all the hype is about. So just getting to be here is obviously great. It's my goal for this club to be the team that when people walk around the complex, they're saying, have you seen that Canadian team? Have you seen those guys? What makes me most proud to represent Canada is the challenge that comes with being a Canadian baseball player. It's harder to be seen and, and looked at as competitive players, but like when you get down to Canada and you watch us play, then you really know what we're all about. And uh, we definitely mean business here. And I feel like you guys will know that by the end. It's obvious this Ontario-based team has a wealth of talent. They have nine college commitments and counting so far. One of those commits who you met in that piece is the future Texas Tech Red Raider, Miles Naylor. And if that name sounds familiar to you, well, that's because his big brothers, Josh and Bo, are already in the big leagues with the Cleveland Guardians. When we return, highlights and analysis from day three at the 2022 WWBA World Championship. Jupiter, Florida, this historic baseball gathering, the World Wood Bat Association World Championship. Day three wrap. When you think about what goes on in day three, it's survive so you can advance and hopefully lift the trophy like the Oestingers did last year. The Florida based team, led by Jimmy Oesting, they finally pulled it back together on day three. They beat South Carolina based the Diamond Devils by a score of nine to nothing. An All American Arjun Namala tripled, pitched in, had a big game. As a matter of fact, We'll get to know him even better a little bit later on in the show. Let's go inside of the stadium, though. Some day three highlights from the beautiful Roger Dean. I've been looking forward to seeing Hero Wyatt pitch all week long, and Andrew Swenson steps in. And Swenson drops that ball into shallow left for a leadoff base hit. That's going to bring up Nathan Wingenroth, an Elon commit. And he rips that pitch right through the infield on the right side, a line drive. And Cheravello chops that ball over Wyatt's head, coming in to get it. Cameron Kim. Wow, nice double play there by Kim. That ball just skips away from Lions, so Swenson will score, and the Red Sox scout team take an early 1-0 lead. James Rate back out on the mound, a Duke commit facing Cameron Kim. Kim slices that ball into right field for a base hit. Max Knight shared that someone he loves to play baseball, Max Scherzer, as he lifts that ball in the air and it dies right in front of Nathan Wingenroth. No, fastball, ball hit right back up the middle to the shortstop. The ball though goes over the head. Two runs will score, tie ball game. One out, the middle infield is back in double play position. Valenia lifts that ball on the right side of the field in the air, tagging up as Birch coming home. The slide, the tag, he's out. The game stays tied. Two runners on, two out, seventh inning, tie ball game. Just like that, bounces right in front of Leap. And he's safe, a run's gonna score. And the Red Sox take the lead five to four. We saw Lorette make an incredible play earlier in this game. And Lorette hits that ball in the air, but right to Nathan Wigginworth. Wigginroth, excuse me. So the Red Sox hold on to win this game. The pictures, the energy from day three, he's always got both. Brian Sikowski back with us. Brian, you want to talk about some pitchers right out of the gates? A couple of righties and a lefty. And a couple of Midwestern guys. I know Absolutely. you are very uh, fanciful toward the Midwest. I'm going to ask you about Braden Krenzel, a 24, so he's got another year here. He's a Tennessee commit, Dublin, Ohio. What do you know? Yeah, these guys that, even from the Midwest, that we might not see a ton throughout the course of a given year, and, and Krenzel's one of those guys. This was really my first kind of real look at him down here. 24, like you said, it's not, this event is not necessarily for 24s, but always good to get that look. 
he was great. It's a great body. He's an athletic bloodlines guy from Columbus. His dad played quarterback at Ohio State. Of course, I remember that growing up a Michigan fan. <laughs> uh, but just it's a it's a real easy mover on the mound. There's a lot to like about uh, what he's able to do with his body, the way he's able to control it. It's good velocity. The arm speed stands out. He can really spin a slider too, Darren. That was one of the things that really stood out this morning. And Copenhaver heads out to my neck of the woods. He's an Ohio man, but kind of. Uh, Really excited about the pack on a year-to-year -year basis. He's committed to go to Washington State Red Scout Team 6'4", right-hander. Yeah, big big physical dude, like you said, 6'4". He looks it, too. He's not one of those listed 6'4s. Um, just a guy that I've seen a fair bit of over the last several years, but a guy who has had to rein, his, rein in his command as he's gone forward. And, and today, so it, he did. It was the first time I think I've seen him with consistent pitch-to-pitch -pitch commands, some repetition in his delivery. It was really powerful stuff, really overpowering stuff. Some, some low mid-80s bat-missing sliders with a lot of tilt, a lot of late bite. He's a guy with arm strength. He's always had stuff, he's always had size, but now with strikes, with better command, best I'd ever seen him today. Trey Beard pitched outside of our tent. You tipped us off, we went over, we watched him. He's tall, he's long, he's lean, he's left-handed, he's an FAU commit. Yeah, and we've already talked about a couple guys who have overpowering stuff. Beard is overpowering for different ways. It's record-breaking uh, induced vertical break on his fastball. It, That's that one. Exactly, yeah. Okay. He's a very, very vertical releaser when he's releasing his forcing fastball. Gets that perfect sort of 12 o'clock spin orientation on the ball. And the induced vertical break numbers were 23 to 26 up to 28 and then Darren obviously being at the PG National you you saw some of those numbers we didn't even get close to those numbers and then those are some of the best players in the class 28 is, is unheard of so he's a guy that as he continues refining his delivery and refining his command he's able to put that fastball where he wants to he's unhittable at 86 87. We've seen the growth of perfect games real scouting presence in Australia we've seen it in Canada we've seen it in the DR down in Puerto Rico but the Canadian Premier team is here mm -hmm. you know it's, there's a team from all the way across in Hawaii. There are Puerto Rican teams, but do you want to talk about maybe three or four guys from that Canadian Premier team? I'll tee them up. Tell me about them. Braden Ricketts, catcher, 2024. He's still just 16 years old. Yeah, and, and this, uh, this Canadian Premier team was brought about by our partnership with the Canadian Premier Baseball League, and Cade Shares and I went up back in August, saw their All-Star Weekend, helped them pick this Jupiter team okay. that's here now. We saw all those players. So Ricketts is a guy, along with the other ones we'll mention, that I've seen a few times. It's a physical left handed hitting catcher, plays first base, plays first base well, might have some positional uh, versatility in that sense. But the draw here is the left-handed stick. He's got a lot of bat speed. He's a strong kid, but it's not strength over bat speed, one of those profiles. It's still bat speed focused, gets the head out. He's on plane. So I'm hits the balls really, really hard this week so far. And, and I've said it, I've written it. If you need a 24 bat, a left-handed stick, call Ricketts. That's amazing. And, and he got on first two games four times. So did Keegan O'Hearn. He got on four times uh, in his first two games, two hits, two walks. Now, this is a bigger guy, 6'5". He's from Oshawa, Ontario. Yeah, speaking of physicality, O'Hearn is 6'5", 210, 220, and looks every bit of it. Um, he's another one of those guys we saw at that All-Star weekend. Huge arm from right field. He's also a left-handed pitcher. But the draw here for sure is that left-handed pop. And he's put it on display this week. It's a guy who understands leverage, understands how to use the length in his body. He gets that barrel out on time, and the strength takes over at that point, and he can drive balls as far to the pull side as we make maybe can see here in an event like this. And it's good to see him having some success in front of coaches because he doesn't, he shouldn't be uncommitted. Whitby, Ontario, 24. Mikeo Cisneros, still just 16 years old. Cisneros is, is one of those guys that we've actually seen quite a bit. Uh, he's come and played in Florida for, for different teams. We've seen him a few times this fall in various uh, events. And he's pitched well here twice. Uh, he got an inning on day one in, in their scrimmage, started today. It's a really pitchable right-handed guy. Uh, he's 85, 88 in there. We've seen him touch higher, but today that's where he sat. Really good changeup, turns it over well. He's developing the slider. A guy who pitches 70% strikes in a, in a given day. Um, a guy with some projection on his body. Just really like the ingredients of what that's going to become. Noah Koning can be an outfielder, can be a left-handed pitcher. He's a he's a senior in 2023, back from Brampton, Ontario. Absolutely. Koning is, an, is another guy. Uh, just a, a hitter is the profile. We've seen him play all three outfield spots. Uh, he can do it pretty well. We've seen the arm on display, so it's something of a weapon that could potentially fit in right field if you don't like him in center. He's a good athlete, but he's one of those guys who's consistent at bats, grinds him out, 
knows the, the zones that he wants to swing at pitches in, doesn't swing at balls, makes consistent hard contact all fields. He's just a well-rounded player that, uh, that we like quite a bit. It's interesting. While I have you here, if you don't mind, I want to check in on one of my favorite perfect game All-Americans. And thank you for all these pop-up guys. Um, and, and it's Edward Phelps, Trey Phelps. He's here. You've gotten reports on him. What do the reports say? Just uh, it's Phelps being Phelps. It's a guy we can we can count on in any given day to be hitting in the middle of the order and to put good at bats together and put barrel on ball. He's got a couple hits. I think he's been on base uh, several times so far. He's showing a little bit of versatility. Maybe playing some first base this week. He's a guy who usually plays third, but uh, we've seen him play short. Guy who can kind of play all over the infield, but he hits and he's hitting here. Thanks for the update on the PG All American and all those other athletes. Absolutely, so thanks for having me. And what's interesting when he talks about the fact that he's played first and then. And of course, he's a talented third baseman. As you think about these Cardinals as they journeyed into the postseason, they did so with Paul Goldschmidt at first, with Nolan Arenado at third. Neither one of them were PG All-Americans. They're both big league stars. Trey Phelps hopes. So if you're having fun while winning, we go together. I love that combo. Good. Yeah. You're the third. We've talked about this, but what does that mean to you to be able to hold the name Edward Phelps the third? I want it to be like a legacy. Um, my granddad always told me like it's holding Phelps like it means like it means something. It's like naming your son like after you is a big deal and. Knowing my dad playing baseball, playing football, playing everything basically, I just wanted to a minimum fill his shoes and if not, even better. And I just wanted to keep going. My, my kid, his kid, I want everybody just to keep getting better. One thing that our coach, I'll say our high school coach, Gene Reynolds, put in us, like mentally, is you don't only have to love the game, but you need to live the game. And if I can do that being myself, I'm perfectly fine with that. If I can go out and laughing and smiling, I mean, that is me, but if I'm able to play the game right and do that at the same time, that's a plus plus at every single, every single time. Anything else? Um, that's the time to go win Jupiter. Yes, it is time, time to go, to go win, Jupiter. win Jupiter. Ooh, I got chills now. Game time. And the numbers back up that he may be very clearly able to go beyond this sign in a couple of years because when you look at his PG career, you see a 471 on base, you see 169 hits coming in, and 101 stolen bases. So speed and power for the gifted Trey Phelps. When we come back, a conversation with his All-American teammate, Walker Jenkins. Many say he may be the number one overall pick next July in the MLB Amateur Draft. You can hear the fun they're having here in Jupiter at the World Wood Bat Association World Championship. We'll be back in a minute. So you've reached this point in your journey where all eyes are on you. Yes, meaning sir. scouts, meaning cameras. There's one right there. You, you've reached this point in the journey where all eyes are on you. How have you dealt with that? You just kind of have to. You know, I, I can't tell you an exact way that I've dealt with it. I've tried to not think about it, play the game that I love, and go out there and have fun. The evolution of your game in 2022 has been what? Where have you really evolved? 
I just think mentally, as my, my mental maturity as a baseball player has gotten so much better, people don't understand how much baseball is a mental game. What was maybe a little bit out of bounds that you needed to lock in mentally? It takes practice just like anything else. I've mentally gained confidence and it, I think it's helped me be more successful. Your coach, Scott Clemens, for your travel program said and the following, when he showed up for the tryout, we knew he was different. He, he just announced his presence. But then we also knew because of his support system, meaning at home, yes, sir. he is set up for success. Those were his exact words. He is set up for success. What did Scott mean by that? Well, you know, I, I wouldn't be here without my family. First of all, my dad goes out and, and, and pitches to me every day. I hear the yes sirs, I hear the Mr. Suttons, I hear all that stuff. Uh, uh, for you, that's kind of an approach, that's a mentality. Is that from home too? No no sirs or no yes ma'ams. I get a little thumped to the forehead or the head like that. They'd make sure I'm, I'm, I'm being respectful to everybody. And so that was always a big priority in my household. It's interesting because for you as an athlete, the one thing I learned, we always hear about baseball, football, baseball, basketball. Your baseball with a little bit of swimming Yes, sir. Expound upon the swimming career. So baseball is really starting to become a reality for me and very serious. And I had a few people suggest swimming can be really good for your body and can and help you be more successful. And you know, that's, that's kind of what I was all about. I wanted to do everything to enable me to be successful. You're doing it again this year? That's the plan. That's the plan, sir. So we'll have to see how it goes. Hopefully I don't drown. But, well, that's a non-contact sport. Teams yeah. can't get angry about that. Just don't hit your head on the wall. You're not going to drown. I think you'll be okay with that. Those prices, man. So I see you shared in the summertime 4.6 GPA, yes, top sir. whatever percent, like 1% or 2% of your school. I'm hearing that same kind of discipline that goes into your academics, yes? Yes, sir. Back to my parents. It was, it was always academics before, before baseball. They've set me up for success and put me in a very good spot for college. At the All-American Banquet, these two guys that are producing this video put together beautiful behind the scenes documentaries yes, sir. on Elijah Green and Mikey Romero. Yes, sir. The night they were drafted. Did you watch those? I did. Could you see yourself being that guy? I could, yes, sir. Expound upon that. That's what you dream about as a kid. You get drafted, you become a major league baseball player, and you know, my, my dream is to become one of the best to ever play. But those that's that's almost the first step in that journey. You know what I'm saying? And, and I can't even imagine having all my family and friends with me and just how surreal it would feel and the emotions overcoming me and a lot of the people that care for me. I hear a lot of serious, I hear a lot of focus, I hear a lot of, like I said, the yes sirs, no sirs. What makes you laugh? What makes you go off of that route where you're a little bit silly and, and, and corny? My friends, man, you, you grow up on the beach, we're always on the water. And you're going out, jet skiing, going to the beach, playing spike ball. When it comes to baseball, I'm, I'm relatively serious and, and talking like this, I try mm -hmm. to remain pretty serious. But in the dugout, I always have a great time. Me and my buddies just joking around. I'm, you can dish it out and take it? Oh yeah, oh Gotta yeah. be able to take it, yeah, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> you, you love it. Baseball is one of those sports, you better be able to take it because you're, you're going to get some. But all my friends, you know, your friends can break you down. Guy just drove you off in a golf cart to come do this interview <laughs> I'm, I'm, with I'm these guys. You're gonna, I'm gonna hear, about hear about it. Hundred percent. That's so. good. That's gonna keep you in the right spot. Yes, sir. Thank you, pal. I appreciate it. Of course. Thank, Thank you. When we return, we'll transition from the number two overall player in the land to an uncommitted, flame-throwing right-hander. It's the story of Hero Wyatt when Perfect Game TV returns to Jupiter. Not everyone in the 2023 class who comes to Jupiter has committed to college, or maybe they've decided to change their mind and reopen their search. That's the case for Hero Wyatt, the number one right-handed pitcher and player in the state of Connecticut. He's in the 2023 grad class, but he reopened his search. So we wanted to find out what are you looking for in a school? What makes you tick on the mound? And also his Japanese heritage, how that's played such an important
We've seen it before, uncommitted coming into Jupiter and making a statement. That's exactly what Hero Wyatt did, touching 95 on the mound for Knights Nation. Pool play is over, don't go anywhere. Bracket play is coming right up. What an awesome night celebrating travel ball coaches, the heartbeat of this sport. All right, we started with 100 teams in Jupiter. We're down to 32 in bracket play, and soon there'll only be eight left. Let's get to our day four highlights, starting with Burn Scout team and Team Georgia National Five Star. Charlie Bergsmith has completed his warm up tosses. He is ready to roll number 19 on that jersey. And surprise, surprise, he walked the first hitter. Team Georgia has had really offensive struggles so far, and they've only gotten here to the playoffs on, by virtue of their getting walks. Ty Marshall puts that one on the ground. Beautiful turn out there at shortstop. Dalton Meadows takes this opportunity to go to work. Carter White, left field. They have dumped it in, and he did. And it slips on by the left fielder out there. Bass will have to go haul it in. A couple of bases then for Carter White. Dalton Meadows, his day is done. Matthew Diskin has taken the opportunity to go to work. Connor Spellman is the catcher. Just a half swing and a base hit and an RBI. And wouldn't you know it, a walk, a stolen base, and a check swing single. There's your run, David. It's one to nothing. Ryan Zuckerman gets the call right out of the gates. Zuckerman splits that gap, hits it hard into left center field, it's down. He'll take the turn, take a look at two, and head there with the slide. It's a leadoff double. Tyler Cusera was getting hot, now he's coming into this game. Tying run is at third. Tying run is coming home. A bases loaded walk. Missed up and out of that strike zone, and now suddenly Team Georgia five-star grabs the lead. And a change. Matt Masidi is a Florida Gulf Coast commit. Walk, hit batter, walk, walk, walk. Braden Martin, that silver platter is full, and it's a wonderful chance with one out. At third base, Colton Schwartz is tight. He's actually on the grass at third. And it's rolled out. Slow roller, got to get the out that's in front of you, and that's what they'll do. Kevin Smith on a 4-3 ground out. You tip your cap to Martin. And Hayes has restored order by throwing a ton of strikes. Breaking ball out toward third. This may move them on to the round of 16, and it does. Team Georgia, five star, with a victory, handily winning by a score of four to one. Hello, Jackson Lucas, nice to meet you. Trying to turn two, staying on the bag, on the first. How'd he do that? How in the world, from a knee, did he pop up and throw that baseball? Sammy Stofora somehow still turned it into a double play. Brandon Oliveira is the pitcher that they are working behind as Luke Stevenson's chomping at the bit. He gets that one hard. Base hit right field. Good bags jump out on top. That's an RBI for Luke Stevenson. Dalton Wentz is the first baseman. Pretty much just low 90s fastball so far. Base hit left field. What a gorgeous approach. He took a pitch down and away. Did he drive in a run? The throw to the plate, not in time. You bet he drove in a run. Sammy Stafora batting eight. Except bat behind his helmet. As the runners take off, that's toward right field. Looking to find green grass, and he does. He'll play another run. A.J. Siskar will take this assignment. Here's Hunter Atkins. He's been on a couple of times. He hits it hard toward the hole into left field for a base hit. Will they try for two? They will, drawing the throw on a hop with the slide in there safe. Hardy continues in the third base dugout for the Dirtbags. David McCann drives that one toward left field. It is well struck. It's still sailing. It is down. 
Wondered back, come on down. Another sent to the plate. McCann will hustle back the first, but he'll do so with a pair of RBIs. And South Carolina commit Dalton Wentz now. Into the dirt it goes. That will plate another dirt bag, and it's nine to nothing. That will do it for the dirt bags. They move on to the 16 team bracket. I'm excited to be back with David Ronsley, Vice President of Player Personnel for our Day 4 Scout Breakdown. David, you've been here all week and you've already talked about a handful of guys, but now we get to dive a little bit deeper into some newer guys that you've seen. We're going to start with left-handed pitcher Talon Bell. He's in the class of 2024, plays for Power Baseball. What stood out about him? Well, I've always been a huge Talon Bell fan. He's an outfield prospect. He's a pitching prospect. He's not real big yet, 5'11", 175. He'll grow, but he's such a good athlete and it shows so much on the mound. He threw five innings of one hit shutout baseball uh, for power baseball, no walks, nine strikeouts, and he's in control of everything. It's, it's not power yet. It's 87, 89 with a, a mid 70s breaking ball, but there's so much potential there because he is such a good athlete. Okay, how about this guy, right-handed pitcher Connor Schaus. He's the class of 2023, plays for ECA Padres scouting, but primary shortstop. Okay, primary shortstop, and what's so exciting about Schaus, first he's from Ball Ground, Georgia. What a great name of a town to grow up in. He's a primary shortstop, and he's a very good shortstop, committed to go to Georgia Tech. But he took the mound in relief for East Cobb Astros, Padres scout team, it was 93 to 96. And I got to thinking about it and watch, you know, watching him throw, looking at backgrounds. And he has a lot of Dylan Cease in him. Cease grew up 30 miles away from Ball Ground, Georgia. And when Dylan Cease was the same age, he was listed at 6'1", 160. You know, Shao 6'1", 165. But that arm works so well. He's a good shortstop. I think he has a better future as a right-handed pitcher, though. I think that'll play, right? That 93-96 will play. Another guy, Jackson Lucas, he's in the class of 2024, plays for the Dirt Bags, and he's another primary shortstop who caught your eye. Yeah, another primary shortstop, I should say he's a 23. I made that mistake. Um, but this is a young man I saw play at the, the workout on, on uh, Wednesday. We had a little showcase workout playing shortstop. He's an outstanding shortstop. Um, bat was a little light, but then he pitched today for the Dirt Bags in the round of 32 in the playoffs. Four no-hit innings, 91-93. Big, big hammer down a curveball, and he's a pitcher going forward. I mean, he's so athletic, 6'3", 190. I think the mound potential is better on, uh, than the shortstop potential. You've been at this event more than two decades. You know what it takes to succeed in Jupiter. You also know what scouts are looking for and, and, and the keys to success. You've talked before, David, about limiting walks and command, and that's something that you saw here in Jupiter that maybe wasn't happening for a couple of arms. Yeah, the, the, the command is, is a big issue, the limiting the walks, because runs are such a premium. But today I want to talk on something else that's, that's needed for success here, and at any level, especially as, as these players go up and play at Power Five conferences, hopefully playing Pro Bowl, and that is mixing your pitches. We had two great 23 right-handers in Hero Wyatt and James Rate. Uh, matchup yesterday. Both are throwing low 90s. Wyatt's topped out at 95, but all they're throwing is fastballs. Both threw 90% plus fastballs. Both did not have good outings for them. And yeah, throwing 92 to 94 is a great thing, but if you don't mix in a breaking ball, if you don't mix in a changeup, the hitters already at this level are good enough that they're going to make that adjustment, they're going to get the barrel on the ball, and you're going to have a bad outing like both those did. I think they could have been better mixing their pitches. All right, we go from the arms to the bats. John Wimmer plays for Upstate Mavericks. His bat was loud. Oh, his bat was loud. You always want to pick out a great performer. It doesn't have to be for a, a big blue blood team. It doesn't have to be an All-American. And John Wimmer has been the best hitter here. Um, plays for the Upstate Mavericks. Is going to go to the Citadel right down the street from me in South Carolina. He's 9 for 13 with four doubles. And it's like, wow, he's had a great event, obviously. Then I looked at his record. He hit 516 last year in PG events, and he hit 476 two years ago in PG events. This young man can hit. It'll be interesting to see how he develops at the Citadel over the next three years. He stood out. Ty Wade stood out, plays for the White Sox scout team, and he muscled up too here. Oh, yeah. Ty, well, Ty Wade, 6'2", 215. It's easy for him to muscle up. What impresses me about Wade, who had three doubles and a home run um, through today, is that he's a big guy and it's such a short swing. 
you know, you could think, you know, those big guys that take big cuts, they're looking for the power. He's been so well coached and adjusted to keeping his swing short. Uh, we, we watched him play at the National Showcase. We've seen him at tournaments all around the country. He's just a solid hitter. He's going to Arkansas, but that's a swing that's going to really translate right away at the next level. All right, last guy shortstop, Sammy Stafara, plays for the Dirt Bags. This guy is the complete athlete. Can I say that? Yes, you can say that. I was going to say that. And each day I like to put in a, a, a defensive player. And note first the defense. I mean, the, the, the hitters get all their stats. It's like velocity and for pitchers. The hitters, it's the stats. You hit home runs. Stafora plays great defense. We saw him make two outstanding plays in Jackson Lewis's start to, to keep his no hitter going. One on a double play that I still don't know how he made the play. But Stafora is a great athlete. He's a 6 4 runner. He's got some pop in his bat. Going to Clemson, but watching him play defense today was fun. Defense is my favorite part of the game, David, so I'm glad you brought him up. Yeah, I always want to mention those defenders. And doesn't have to be in the middle of the field, guys. We had PJ Orla Orlando the first, Orlando the first day with his great throw from right field. Today oh. it's today it's Sammy Stafora. All right. Well, the teams are starting to pack their bags. Some are going home. Some are extending their stay in Jupiter. Let's take a look right now at that quarterfinal bracket. There's a lot of the blue bloods in this. They are the teams you'd expect to be here. I saw the dirt bags play today. Boy, were they good. They were. They are so athletic. They have pitchers who throw strikes. They're kind of my little favorite right now. But I'm also looking at the left coast right now. Uh, CBA Marucci and the San Diego Show all playing great. I don't see a, a underdog team creeping up here. David, thank you. Thank you, Danny. Coming up next, an amazing conversation with the number three player in the class of 2023, Arjun Namala, who one year ago right here delivered a world championship winning walk-off base hit for the O-Stingers. This is Perfect Game TV's coverage of the 2022 WWBA World Championship. They simply call it Jupiter, the World Wood Bat Association World Championship. And as we welcome you back, I found a fun little catbird seat high up above the Cardinals complex, the St. Louis Cardinals. They'll be working hard here. It'll be right around the corner in 2023. Going back to last year, when you looked at the championship, what an incredible memory. The dirt bags were expected to win, but they came up short. They were upended by the O-Stingers, a team out of Florida with a fabulous extra inning win. The walk-off game winner? A young man who was playing up a year. We were just getting to know him then, Argent Namala. We know him very well now. He's the number three player in the land. He's a Florida State commit, and many say a very high pick in next summer's draft. It all started for this young man long before he came about this earth when his family in 2001 moved to the United States from India. Here's the story. Other than my Mom and dad and like a few like cousins, everyone is in India. My grandparents are in India. My mom's my dad's side. Everyone I know is in India and that's literally all my origins, just India. I have nobody else from other places, but I'm very proud of my background because if I could one day make it to the majors, it'd be great to just represent India. I like to have fun when I play baseball, that's it. Anytime I'm around a baseball field, I'm having fun, that's it. Just stepping out on a field, it just like makes me complete. Like it just feels so great feeling that breeze. Like right now, that breeze is, is great. And then the ability to just go out there and have fun, just have fun, that's it. As a hitter, I'm very aggressive when I'm playing. Like I like to swing a lot, but I'm also very patient. I'm patient aggressive, and I really love hitting that fastball. That's my strong suit, I would say, but I also believe I have a great like feeling of my like barrel, and I know how to keep my hands through the zone long enough to hit any pitch, whether it's a fastball or curveball slide or anything. All I think about when trying to keep the hands through the zone is really just keeping my back elbow tucked in as long as I can the whole way through the pitch. Really, what all it comes down to is just being connected. All you have to do is be connected. Just everything's in sync. That's all I try to do when I hit. Everything in sync. Indians, like, we love to pray to God and, like, worship God a lot. So before any game, you know, I always, like, pray to the sun god or to any god saying, oh, God, please help me do great this game and help my team, really. When I was a kid, I hated failing. I hated failing. But now as I grew, I understood baseball as a game of failure. So all I do now is try to focus on the next game and you know, 
focus on what I've done wrong before and just get better at that. My mom's the nicest person I've ever met, but my dad, he's always on my case. Like anytime I do something wrong, he's like, fix that. But before every game, he always tells me that I'm good. He gives me something to eat, give me something to drink so that I can do my best. And he's always telling me to work hard for something that I want. Arjun is an origin from Arjuna, it's just without the A. He's a skilled archer, he's like a, like a god in our Hindu religion, and he knows like everything that he's doing. He's like a skilled warrior and that's all it comes from. The pressure is definitely like hard to take, but when you have people around you that really support you, like they really help you like get through it and you know, just play. It's all they tell you to do, just play and everyone will come watching you. I just hope my name gets called in a first round pick, that'd be great. That's all I imagine for next June or July when it comes. Oh, that first ever perfect game event, he makes it very clear. I didn't even know really what perfect game was, but it was back in 18. He didn't even weigh 100 pounds yet, and the young man hit four home runs in the event, and in his first ever event, he was the MVP. When we come back, the final four teams in this year's tournament fight for a spot in the title game at the 2022 WWBA World Championship in Jupiter, Florida. Welcome back to Jupiter, Florida. It's here, the final day of the WWBA World Championship, and now the semifinals are set. Last year's runners-up, the number one seed Dirtbags, taking on the top-tier five-star Ruse Mafia. And on the other side, it's a loaded Canes National Met Scout team facing the FTB Philly Scout team.
Really quiet as we welcome you back to Jupiter, Florida. It's because 98 teams have gone home at the Worldwood Bat Association World Championship. It's Kane's National Mets Scout Team, top tier, the talented team combined with five star. Those two teams fighting for it all. And when you look at the rosters, nine perfect game all Americans. A great celebration is moments away. Let's get to the championship. This top tier five star lineup. Ariel Antigua, we mentioned Drew Burris. He's just such a talented hitter and a lifelong travel ball player. A.J. Ewing, PG All-American, Alfonso Rosario, Wesley Mendez, Cooper McMullen, Christopher Wally, Landon Morotis, another PG All-American, Riley Jackson behind the plate. The starting lineup for the top tier five-star team. From Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, Bradley Link is committed to go play for Tracy Smith at the University of Michigan. He's the number 10 ranked right-handed pitcher in this state. The number seven ranked shortstop in Florida, Ariel Antigua, who spent his time as a perfect game select festival athlete, has hung around that top 100 space in the nation, heading into his senior year of high school. First pitch is a fastball. We're underway in the title game. Glad to have you with us. And Antigua, not big, 5'10"-ish. 17 years old. David, you guys have scouted him at 80 PG events as he waves at a breaking ball. Down he goes, and a nice job. Campbell Smithwick behind the plate turns it into out number one. Nice slider there from Link. He's really pretty much thrown all fastballs, both in his, his previous game and in this at bat. Power slider there, and Tegu was not looking for it, obviously. We have one out. Drew Burris joined Antigua as a select festival athlete in 2019. He then, this past summer, was a perfect game All-American, one of the best right-handed hitters in the country, and he's a Georgia Tech commit. The number five overall outfielder in the United States is ranked by perfect game. Well, Burris has huge right-handed power at the plate. Another, like Antigua, not a big athlete, although very strong, very well-developed. Has hit 11 homers this year in PG action, but so far his off offensive contribution hitting in the number two hole has been getting on base. He's got seven walks in eight games, along with four hits and a hit by pitch, has scored seven runs. So he's been more of a table setter for top tier rather than the big run producer that he often is. We've seen him at perfect game events, touch 97 with his outfield arm, 95 with his infield arm. We've seen him run a 6-4-60. Bradley Link is catching his breath here. Bradley Link, I mean, he was threw up the first game after he pitched and then comes out here, throws up again, and starts sitting 90. And that's just not a normal person right there. He's, he's an animal. That's a good pitch. If you can gauge a hitter with a high spin rate, fastball up in the zone, those are tough to drive. To get the hands on top of that ball is difficult. Alabama commit A.J. Ewing. He is a senior. He is out of Springboro, Ohio, and A.J. It's a high fly ball to right field. Tommy rolled on, over, under, out, and he puts it away. I don't know, I was just pitching, feeling great. Started feeling not even queasy or nauseous. I just kind of started feeling it in my stomach, and my throat, and like that feeling I was about to throw up. I held it back a couple times, and uh, then it came out, and I was uh, just kind of letting it happen at that point. Kind of puked all over the mound, so. John Abraham is on the mound out of Tampa, Florida. 17-year-old John Abraham. He's dealing with a very tough lineup. Kevin McGonigal, you saw his name. One of the finest hitters in the nation, right or left-handed. A perfect game All-American. Gallagher right behind him. Johnny Farmello had a big hit in the last game. Add to Campbell Smithwick. Tommy Roll Dawn, PG All-American. Trent Carraway, it's Luke Lavin. Ryan Jaros and Macon Winslow, PG All-American as well. Gallagher was hitting six last game, and that big hit knocked him up to number two in the lineup. Maybe a reward for that. The right-hander goes back to that pitch. Runs it right under the hands of Kevin McGonigal. And he will definitely take a walk if you if you don't challenge him in the strike zone. He's not, not going to expand. Tracking, recovering, and making the play out there is Drew Burris. An opportunity for Gavin Gallagher to hit. I spin rate heater up here. Farmello, the center fielder. Beaten with that one. It's lifted into foul territory. Landon Morotis heads toward the dugout, and he has room. 
This is a perfect game, All-American, Alphonse and Rosario, the number one player in the state of New Jersey. 2-2, Two -two. breaking ball hitter. Vanderbilt awaits the arrival of Wesley Mendez out of Tampa, Florida. As that's a strike and down goes Wesley Mendez. Coop, Cooper McMullen. To the backstop it goes, and that will allow Alphonse and Rosario to move up into scoring position. Has to bring the hands in, it's lifted back of third base. Ryan Jaros is there, and he makes the play for the second out of the inning. Christopher Wally, the left-handed bat, gets the call. Wally will hop up in the mound, work as a left-handed pitcher as well. Speaking of the mound, he hits it back to that mound on one hop. Campbell Smithwick is the catcher, left-handed stick. This old Miss commit pushes a bunt up the third baseline on a throw with the dig at first. Got him! Maryland man, Tommy rolled on. And that's been a friend of his, though that breaking ball was up nearly as he dives into the netting, nearly made the play there. Wow, Riley Jackson. Wow. Melbourne, Florida native and the Florida State commit. There's that breaking ball again. He's on top of getting his fingers on top of that. It released so well. Trent Carraway has some great looking shoes as he digs in. Very athletic for his size. Stands almost 6'3", about 210 pounds. As that breaking ball is served to the right side. <laughs> it's got wild spin on it just in time for the out. So now we're going to get Michael Miller on the mound. Ariel Antigua currently is ranked right around that number 100 spot amongst all players in North America. That's on the ground towards short. One. On to first. Not in time. Hurrying home with the slide. Zadalis scores the first run. Top tier Roos five-star team. Jumps on top in the championship game. Luke Lavin leads it off against John Abraham. That breaking ball was nasty. Ryan Jaros out of Cranford, New Jersey. And it's strong, the statement being made by Abraham. From Hertford, North Carolina, comes Macon Winslow. Breaking ball, he just struck out the side. Wow, what a statement being made by John Abraham. Five strikeouts in the championship game. Landon Marotis to lead things off. There's another walk. This is Chase Meyer, brand new commit to West Virginia, and that's ball four. Hoping his teammate Drew Burris can pick him up. It's rocking close early, quick hands there. Very quick hands, line drive center field, it's a base hit, one scores, a two RBI single, and an amazing reaction at first base. Alfonso and Rosario now. On the ground, into center field. Here comes Burris, hurrying toward the plate. It's four to nothing. Luke Lavin, he threw that right on the knuckles. Will they get any? Out, they call him out with the tag. He got him with the tag, and it's a double play. A.J. Ewing popped that tag down. He got Caraway streaking by and turned it into a twin killing. Get a swing now and get a pitch he can hit. He did, <laughs> and he hits a high fly ball to right center field. Toward the alley it goes. It's run down out there by Tommy Roldan. And that is five to nothing. John Abraham, the story. He has allowed just one hit. It was off the bat of Trent Carraway. He only hit it about 30 feet. Abraham with the 0-2. Breaking ball popped up. Center field. Drew Burris puts it away. It's a complete game shutout for John Abraham. Top tier, five star, they win Jupiter. It's unreal. I never really thought I was gonna pitch in the championship, but I came out here and I just did what I do. And it was just amazing, unreal experience. Incredible.
I don't think you understand how fortunate we feel to be a part of this amazing event. A hundred teams and a million memories, and by the way, a couple thousand journeys into professional and minor league baseball. All of it ties in. Jupiter 25s next year in 2023. And by the way, if you enjoyed content like this and you've watched it on your regional sports network, go ahead and find our app. It's perfectgame.tv on any of your smart devices. We'll see you at Jupiter 25. Until next time, the World Wood Bat Association World Championship is in the books. I'm Darren Sutton.